My name is Darren Emerson. I am the CCO and co-founder of VR City. I'm Conan Roberts. I'm the head of post-production at VR City. VR City is a leading UK VR production house. So by VR, I mean virtual reality and 360 video. We were asked to made, make a health and safety video for a big education uh, company that, that works internationally. And they said it would be great at the end of our course if we could put on a headset and we could kind of, uh, we could get all the students to put on the headset and we could do this kind of real practical sort of kind of uh, examination of what we'd just learned. Just making a very simple sort of film like that just opened the door to we could do so much with this. And for me, that was a real sort of epiphany. I was like, yes, I really want to go and make documentaries. There's stories that I really want to tell, and I think that this medium is great for those stories and, and can add value to that. Invisible is a virtual reality documentary about the immigration detention system in the UK and specifically focusing on uh, indefinite detention. In terms of the two documentaries that we've made, Invisible and Witness 360, there's a lot of reconstruction in it. There's a lot of like being very thoughtful about what you're presenting to the viewer. In Invisible, we did film. I mean, a lot of it was difficult in terms of we didn't have access to uh, immigration detention centres, which is what the film's about. Um, and our contributors didn't want to be on screen. They wanted to be anonymous. So that, that, that creates quite a lot of problems. You're like, okay, I don't have a location and my contributors can't be on screen. What am I going to do? Um, so the whole film was like a creative response to that, using audio but creating kind of a whole world basically around, around that. VR definitely has changed the way that we look at storytelling. For me, creatively, it's, it's trying to think about storytelling in a spatial way. So it's environmental storytelling. You are curating a experience for a viewer. So you have to then think about the environment in which they are perceiving all the action, all the narrative that you, that you want them to see. So that fundamentally changes everything. Therefore, you can't cut in the same way. You have to transition in a very different way. You, have, you, you are dealing with an interactive medium. So, I mean, and at its heart, that's the most important element, I think, because you're giving, as a director or a producer, you're, you're creating something, but then you're giving the power to the viewer themselves. I think when we first started making um, VR 360 videos, I was still very much in a headset of working as an editor in the way I would traditionally, um, and how I cut, and how we pace things, and compose shots. And quite quickly, you kind of start to realise that everything you know as a traditional editor, you kind of have to throw out in a way, and kind of start from scratch, and start looking at things in a really different way, and different way of working, um, and just a different way of kind of building your film. I think how things change with the development of technology in VR is in a way it just constantly makes our lives easier. Like at the start we were working with basically just like traditional set of tools you would to make an, a traditional film. Um, whereas in VR there's a lot of other stages in the kind of post workflow you kind of need to go through to get to your finished point. Uh, I'd been sent on an Adobe course through MTV, who I'd worked with for a long time. They kind of sent me over to the Adobe offices in London and we kind of got talked through uh, Creative Cloud and the new kind of workflow which Premiere was introducing with After Effects kind of integral to it. And it just seemed like the kind of perfect tool to have, or it's just a, a really big toolbox in a way. Um, I kind of feel as the way I work is I think of Premiere as like my kind of go-to base kind of program I use. And then, after Effects, Photoshop, Illustrator, Media Encoder, they're all just kind of little offshoots of Premiere in a way. It's kind of try, how I try and think about it rather than solely working in one program or in another. Especially for VR, I think, because there is a case where you have to go out to After Effects and you've got to get rid of these rigs and paint out stands. Um, so you just kind of quickly send it down to Photoshop and everything just kind of works together really easily for a kind of VR 360 video workflow, perfectly. Having kind of these, this tool of like filmmaking um, ideas and techniques and tropes which I've learned for years and years and years, 
and seeing how many of them we can translate into VR and 360 and what is what does work, what doesn't work, and just trying stuff yeah. out. Like, I think generally what's next is is that we're going to continue doing what we're doing, continue to explore sort of the new horizons and, and the developments, and see how far we can push the storytelling that we're doing in VR. And as the technology changes, hopefully we're going to grow and change with it. And, and I guess we'll see where it ends up. You know? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs>